Okay, this video is how I built a roof rack for the top of my Toyota 4Runner 5th generation. And as you can tell, I've kind of patterned this after some popular roof racks that are on the market. But I wanted to build my own and it was pretty fun. So this will show you how I did that. And I'm not going to cover every little step of the process nor will I give you dimensions for everything because I was kind of just making this up as I went based on photos I could find online and just ideas that I researched. So I've had it in use and it works great. I can stand on top of it, super sturdy. Uh, I got some factory, or excuse me, some crossbars off of Amazon. They're fairly inexpensive, but they're super sturdy and they're adjustable. So I can move them around, put them where I need to. I have a bike rack up on there now. I'll put a link to those crossbars in the description. I kind of like them. All right, this is just a quick video on the roof rack that I'm going to build for a fifth generation Toyota 4Runner. Kind of be Gobi Stealth style. I really like those. I don't want to buy one. They're quite expensive. And you can really get the materials for less than a hundred bucks plus a paint or powder coat. You're probably you know, looking at less than 200 bucks when all is said and done have a comparable rack. The metal is tubing, it's steel, it's 16 gauge. The dimensions when I'm done will be around 88 inches long, 45 inches wide. And I had a friend help do some bending today. It's pretty simple. Made a little more progress on the roof rack. Everything's bent. I've done a bunch of welding together right now. I just kind of tack welded a bunch of stuff until I can get some gas for the welder. Uh, I've been using flux core to do some tacking. And right now you can see I've got the top hoop. It's just sitting flush on top of the bottom hoop. But I've tacked onto the bottom hoop about every one foot. I've done a support rail all the way down. And I'll finish in... Uh, some welding once I get that gas on those. They're all tack welded currently also. And then I'll start making the probably going to do three inch vertical pieces to uh, separate the top and the bottom hoop. Get those welded in and I'm making some progress. It's going good. I just barely tacked this uh, top piece here. I had a piece of angle iron clamped on there for a minute just to make sure it's good and straight. And I'm going to be doing the same thing here in just a minute. As you can see, to butt these two pieces together, since the metal's so thin, I've been putting a little insert piece inside the pipe. So all you've got to do is find something that's got a similar outer diameter to match the inner diameter of the tube. and. I found that pretty easy in my scrap pile, so I just made these little plugs. They're only about three inches long. Then I put these two things together, leave a little gap so that your welding actually tacks onto all three objects, both sides of the tube and the insert. You don't want that insert loose and rattling around inside there if you don't hit it. So leave a good gap about the width of your welding wire. And Basically, I just started by making two giant hoops and at first I bought a Harbor Freight uh, pipe bender. Do not do that, it will not work, it's super difficult. I got a couple bends that were okay, but it was much better just to go uh, get a friend that was a pro. He had the right tool to do the tubing bends, shouldn't be too expensive, you only need eight bends. I bought four lengths of 20, and I think I'm going to have enough. The only thing that I have remaining to do is build all of the vertical uprights. And I've got a lot of scrap laying around, so it's going to be close. I might have to go back and buy another 10-foot length. So right now I've just tack welded these bottom braces. I've done one every foot. And then the measurement on the end is a little bit different. Setting back the top hoop just a hair so I can put a fairing on there, probably make it look more aerodynamic. Seems to be the thing to do. Okay, I thought I better do a quick little video on the joints that you're going to have to grind because you have to do a lot of these for the rack. Seems like a hundred. It's probably not quite that many, but it's a lot. 
Uh, as you can see, I got some angle ones here that have been tacked on and then a whole bunch down the side and the crossbars have them. So the end of pretty much every piece of tube, you have to have a saddle joint cut like this. I do have the right tool for the job, which is a, a drill jig right here. And you basically stick your piece of tube in this clamp and then you can drill down this one inch bit. We'll cut pretty close to a perfect saddle joint. I've used that for some, but I have a lot of odds and ends pieces like this laying around that are making good uh, vertical pieces that don't really fit in the jig without some modification because there's not enough pipe length to clamp on. So on these, all I've done is I've taken a little piece of paper, made a little uh, template, I guess, and put it on the pipe, draw it on really quick, and then I've got an angle grinder with a quite thick disc that's probably quarter inch I'd say disc and I can grind something like that out in less than a minute per side and I've got I took this project on because I wanted uh, some busy work I guess something to do it seemed like something fun so yeah I don't mind that it takes a little bit longer to do these by hand but that's a quick and easy way to do it wear a glove on your left hand because these get hot when you're holding them but Okay, everything has been tack welded and I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is the finish welding. Everything seems pretty precise and as straight as I could get it. I'll also be adding a bed of expanded uh, welded wire onto the top, give it a good surface area. Again, apologies that I haven't given a lot of instructions on all the dimensions and all the steps, but really if you have some basic welding and fabrication skills, it's pretty easy and you can customize this. I just copied a bunch of off-the-shelf baskets you can buy, plus some homemade ones I saw online. Took the best parts of each that seemed like it was gonna work for my needs. So I'll get started on the next step, and after all that, then I gotta figure out how to fabricate the, uh, the mounting brackets to hook this to the roof. All right, next step on the roof rack. I've got pretty much everything welded. My spot welds have been finished to uh, finished welds, bead welds, and I've done some grinding on my bad welds. And I'm ready to put on some flooring. I purchased this 9 gauge expanded metal. Cost about 40 something bucks so far. Metal wise I'm into this project just barely over 100 bucks. But a lot of hours. This has been a lot of work especially all the saddle cuts and welding those. They have to be quite precise. Next move is to... I've got the rack upside down and I put the sheet of expanded metal on it just to trace out the shape. So I've got it aligned here where I want it to be on that edge and that edge. But then it's too big, so I've got to come over here with a magic marker. I'll mark down this where I'm going to need to cut it with the angle grinder. And I'll cut it all the way around here. I'm actually gonna come in and cut it here so that I have a gap on the back of the rack and there's, as you saw, a gap on the front of the rack. Just personal preference. I Actually, there is an antenna on the back of a Forerunner that kind of sticks back here, a little shark fin, so I'm gonna leave a gap there. Anyway, I'll cut that sheet metal out, or the expanded metal, then I'll flip the rack upside, or right, sorry, right side up, and I'll put the flooring material inside the rack. I don't wanna weld that to the bottom of the rack. It'll be inside the rack, resting on all of these horizontal crossbars. And I'll tack weld it all on there. So that's the next step. Get I've tack welded the deck onto the rack and now I'm just working on fabricating up some mounting brackets. On the Forerunner it seems like this bottom plate's about one and an eighth so I've done that. I've only tacked this so far and I'm putting a 10 degree uh, pitch on the upright. There will be holes drilled here to mount into the vehicle on the where the existing rack factory rack goes. And another piece of metal here. And I'm just experimenting right now because I'm not exactly sure what's going to work. And putting this rack on the roof is quite heavy. So just going to go for it. Okay, I made a lot of progress in the last few days. I have welded on some mounting brackets. There's the ones for the back. It's just like a quarter inch chunk of steel. I welded it to the middle of the bottom hoop. 
and so it sits about a half inch up from the bottom of the rack. Welded wires on. I re-engineered, basically took out one horizontal parallel brace here, and I replaced it with these two perpendicular ones. And I did that because the mounting brackets for the front, which have made basically these little boxes. They look kind of ugly right now, but I made these boxes that recess down half an inch so that the mounting plate ends up in the middle of the bottom hoop. That thing was going to end up right where that cross brace was, unfortunately. So I pulled that out, welded up those perpendicular ones, and it looks pretty good still. So I'm happy with it. These boxes that I made, as you can see, the weld isn't all that pretty in here, and it hasn't been cleaned up or polished or anything. But that's what this box looks like. And then let's see if I can show you the bottom of that. Basically gave me that surface right there. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. I'll lift it up. There it is. Gave me that flat surface on the bottom. And that's going to allow me to drill two bolt holes here and then the mounting plates from the car, which are some brackets that I still need to fabricate, will uh, join with those two front brackets, uh, bracket mounts rather. And then up here on the very front, I'll end up making two more legs that will come down and contact the top of the roof. Those will most likely have rubber pads on the bottom. They won't be drilled into the car because there's no mounts up there. This is pretty common. And then I'll throw down a piece of that clear bra plastic where they hit, put a little bit of light tension on those, try to get them out uh, near the side of the car where there's some good structure for those to hit. And not, not a lot of weight will be on those because this rack is so rigid and nobody's gonna be jumping around up on the front of this. And Okay, really quick, one thing that I don't know if I showed is that I've marked the bolt holes that are on top of the Toyota 4Runner on the concrete with a magic marker. And the way I did that is I took the factory roof rack off and I brought it out here, set it on the ground, and used it as a template just by mark, uh, sticking the marker through the channels that the bolts go through on the factory rack. I could make some marks on the cement. And that gave me a really good idea of where everything's gonna land. So now I can uh, kind of see I've got the rack propped up on some two by fours, and that's about how high I'm gonna have it. So now I can fabricate the mounts that will go to the Forerunner and kind of have a good idea of what angle they need to be on to hit the plates that I've put on the rack. And then, of course, I think I already explained this, but I'll drill holes here and on the back mounting plate and I'll bolt everything together. Just a quick look at the mounting bracket that will go on top of the vehicle. This bottom plate here will have two bolt holes drilled into it. Those will be perfectly round and perfectly spaced apart to match up with the holes in top of the Forerunner. And then up here on this plate, I'll do a couple of slotted holes so that I'll have a little bit of play or adjustment once, uh, once I get the bracket on top of the roof, then I can kind of move the rack around, get it all nice and centered before I snug that down. And of course that will match up just right underneath this plate, which will also have some slotted holes drilled in it and well, I, sh I should have a lot of adjustment wiggle room in a few different directions if needed. Something I've been thinking about is water getting in between the expanded metal and the bottom crossbars that they're tacked to. So I had most of the expanded metal tacked down pretty well and I just had it tight to the bars and then I was out on a I was out mountain biking in the desert uh, near Moab, Utah, and I saw somebody coming past me that had a fifth gen Forerunner with a rack on the top, similar to the one I'm building. And I stopped them and I asked if I could take a close look at how their expanded metal was connected. And this floor was actually floated up and off of the uh, bars, if you can see that. So I've got, what I've done is I've I made about an eighth of an inch gap, maybe even a little more. That's yeah, probably more like a quarter inch. 
and I just built up my tack welds. I put a shim under there and then I just started tacking until I hit the elevation and uh, yeah, so now my entire floor is floated an eighth of an inch. Well, probably, like I said, closer to a quarter of an inch high off of the crossbars. And really, it's very similar. It seems to be super sturdy. You can't really even tell, unless you're looking closely, that the two are not touching. But that's going to keep, you know, a lot of rain and debris and anything that could cause co corrosion from getting in between those two pieces of metal. So now I can spray it off. I'll get paint in between the two, which is important, and or powder coat, and should just uh, help it last longer. Just a quick video of one of my brackets that I made. Here's side view. Leaving them a little bit rough. I'm not gonna grind the welds all the way down. I'll finish it up, do a little more prep, make it a bit nicer before I put a coating on it. But what I've done is I've got my holes uh, drilled on the bottom. I'm going to drill some on the top. I just barely took a, a punch and I made two marks. And I'll take a smaller drill bit and do a little pilot hole. Then I'll hit it with the full size. And these marks are exactly the distance that they need to be for the factory mounts on top of the forerunner. Just a quick video on taking the covers off for the roof rack. This again is a fifth gen Forerunner. I just got a bike tool, it's plastic so it won't scratch the paint but I really don't even touch the paint. You put that under, you carefully pop just in a couple places and then pull this back gently. And there you go, there's the two bolts that I'm going to mount to on the rear right side. Okay, I'm up on the roof of the Forerunner and I'm going to show you really quickly, not in a lot of detail, how I'm going to mount my brackets to the roof. And this one is pretty close to being done. I've got to finish it up, uh, grind a few of the wells just a little bit, make it look nicer, then uh, prep it for uh, coating. But what I've got going on is this is basically what you're left with after you take the factory rack off. I've made these plastic spacers just out of uh, some really thick sprinkler pipe. It's kind of for those, you know, those one foot extension arms that you, people put in the shrub beds. Just cut some pieces off that make it about flush with that lip there. And there's probably a million ways to do this. Then I made, I bought some rubber off Amazon and I've made basically a gasket. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna fill this stuff with RTB uh, sealant, you know, like marine grade silicone type stuff. Gonna put that under these, in these, around these, tons of it, just so I don't get any leaks. Then RTV sealant on top of these. I think that's what it's called, RTV. And then I've got these gaskets that I made. They're just rubber. It's pretty thin, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Then my metal plate. So the rubber keeps the metal plate from scratching the paint. And then I'm using the factory bolts. They seem to be a good length. That'll screw into there. And I'll essentially end up with clearance that I'm not gonna be hitting any paint. That'll look pretty good. And I gotta do four of those, so a lot of work to do. Okay, that's what I end up with. And I did buy a bunch of other rubber that I'll probably put between each of the metal pieces just so things aren't vibrating and scratching. Keep the noise down, keep the corrosion possibilities down. But that's basically it. One is done. There's clearance underneath the metal to the paint. And I'll be putting, again, more rubber between there anyway. And so it should be good. Just gotta take those off, finish them up, coat them. But I'm putting all four of them on right now so that I can lift the rack onto the roof so that it's sitting on top of these. Then I'll take a magic marker and go up through the bottom and I will mark where I need to drill holes on the rack. Then I'll take the whole thing apart and coat it, paint it, and I'll be done. Okay, I've got all four brackets on the roof. And I've got a blanket. I'm going to lay this out and then I'm going to set the rack up here. Careful not to scratch anything. 
then I'll do some alignment. Okay, the rack is on the roof. It's starting to finally look like getting somewhere. I clamped down uh, my connection points and I took this little tiny pencil and I marked through the drill holes so that I know where to drill into the rack so that I'll be able to do the final bolting. And everything went pretty smooth. Now I'm gonna eyeball kind of where I need to put a th third leg per side on the front. And if you've seen some of the available racks that you can buy, you'll know that those just kind of have a rubber foot on the bottom and they just kind of push down with pressure on your roof so you don't have to actually connect to anything. And really this thing's so bomber. Unless you were standing on the brow of that, uh, you probably wouldn't have any problems not even having any, having a front leg there. So, getting somewhere. Next step. Just yesterday I painted the rack. I used a two-part epoxy primer from an automotive store and then also an alkaloid enamel that had a catalyst hardener in it, so it should be pretty bomber. Turned out pretty smooth. It's kind of a satin finish. Uh, the hardener, I started with flat black and then the hardener adds a little bit of gloss. Turned out nice though. And it should be pretty durable. It's not powder coat, but I plan to do some modifications to this. So I didn't want to uh, powder coat and then, you know, have to be grinding and welding and trying to figure out how to uh, repair around the area. So this was a good option. I just used a simple cheap Harbor Freight spray gun and works really well anyway tomorrow i'll mount this up all right all four mounts are on top of the forerunner and basically what i showed earlier was i made those little posts out of sprinkler pipe and i put tons of rtv silicone on those and those are kind of a spacer then i've got a piece of rubber that i put on top of that again lots of rtv silicone then the metal plates that I made, then RTV silicone, then the mount that you're seeing here with, I just used the factory bolts for now, probably get some different ones later, and they came with a rubber washer on there, so it should be nice and uh, waterproof. Put some silicone under those washers as well. So should be good to go. Just a quick video of what the front feet look like. They don't bolt on, they're just tension, so uh, you kind of just have to drill the holes such in those two plates that the foot ends up giving a little bit of pressure to the roof. And I put a rubber pad underneath that foot just so it doesn't scratch the paint or damage anything. But for the most part, it lines up on that uh, black uh, rubber rail. So it's pretty good. Turned out nice. Final step on the roof rack is to make a wind fairing. I made the mistake of buying some acrylic plexiglass like stuff and it just shattered when I tried to cut it. And it wasn't going to be a long term solution even if I cut it successfully because eventually it would crack and shatter. So I picked up this sheet of Lexan, it's I think a polycarbonate or something like that. It's different, it's almost impossible to shatter, you can actually bend it basically to 180 degrees and it still doesn't want to crack or break. So it's clear, it does have a film on there, but I'm just cutting it right now with a skill saw and then I'm gonna mount it up on the front of the rack and I'll be done. That'll reduce wind noise. Right now I have tons of wind noise without it, but I did mount a cardboard uh, test piece on there just to make sure it was going to work and it's working great. The roof rack is completely done. It's a little bit rainy. I wanted to show the fairing that I made, it's just clear Lexan. I had these old mounting brackets off of an old Yakima rack, so I used them. I was just gonna use zip ties if I didn't have those. And it's complete, I've been using it a lot. No leaks into the cab of water. Got a bit of rain today. Really happy with how this turned out.